now that the Sony a6700 has been announced a lot of people are gonna want to know should they buy the 6700 or should they buy the Sony FX30 that's what we're gonna talk about in this video let's get it on with the meat potatoes man before we get into this comparison a few things I want to tell y'all number one I don't freaking script video so if I mess up I just mess up there's a ton of data to go over and obviously I'm gonna leave some stuff out and I might misquote some stuff if I do just let me know in the comments with that being said these are the best of Sony's APS-C offerings the FX30 is an APS-C video first baby cinema camera the 6700 is a hybrid photo and video camera with a whole lot of new processing and AI stuff built into it so we're gonna start first with price. The FX30 is 1800 bucks by itself. If you get the top handle, then it's 2200 bucks. Now, the 6700, again, this is pre-release, so final price it hasn't been set. But I'm gonna put the pricing on the screen right there. So for sure, the 6700 is the cheaper option. With that extra money, you know, you could get you a little lens, you could go get you a cheeseburger, some coffee, something like that. So just something to think about, it is cheaper. Now that we got that out the way, let's talk about handling, physical characteristics, all that stuff, because it is important. Starting with the 6700 it's obviously a smaller body than the fx30 that's pretty evident if you put them side by side you could tell right off the bat which one is the bigger body the fx30 is absolutely bigger so if we were to do a tour of the a6700 let me remove this condor blue sensor cap y'all always ask me terry what is that look condor blue makes these sensor caps links will be in the description for i have these for all of my cameras 26 megapixel backside illuminated cmos sensor they both share the same sensor you can also see on the 6700 there's a dial on the front of the grip which is a really welcome addition if we take a look at the top you got your on and off switch you got your custom buttons all around what's big about the 6700 is this photo video sq switch similar to like the a7r5 has and the sony a7 IV. since this is a hybrid camera this is very very important being able to switch back and forth between them it also has a digital multi-interface shoe like all of sony's new cameras it's got an evf which the fx30 doesn't have so the evf is a two 2.36 million dot 120 frames per second evf i would have liked to see a higher resolution but it is what it is if we flip the display open we got a three inch 1.03 million dot and it's not that great we got the same typical buttons that you get on any other 6000 series camera if we flip it over it's got a z battery and on the left side we have a single card slot which supports uhs1 uhs2 we got a mic jack a headphone jack a micro hdmi port and the USB C gen 2 3.2 port which does support power delivery and up to 10 gigabits per second transfer speed the body is also dust and weather resistant and overall it feels like a very very premium little camera now moving over to the fx30 this is obviously a much more robust body first of all it is bigger it feels more substantial in my opinion it looks way better i love the way the fx30 and fx3 look so on the front you got the same sensor, the 26 megapixel sensor. You got a front record button. If we look at the front grip, you got a dial on the front grip, but you also have a zoom rocker because it is obviously a video camera. And then you got customizable buttons all over the place. If we flip open the card door, it supports two CF Express Type A cards, and they can also accept UHS-1, UHS-2 SD cards. At the top, we got the regular old multi-interface shoe, and you can see all over, there's multiple mount points everywhere. It's got tally lights built into it. On the sides, you got full size HDMI which does support raw recorded externally you got a microphone jack a headphone jack a USB-C 3.2 gen 1 port that only supports 5 gigabits per second and a micro USB multi interface port the big thing about the FX 30 is it has a built-in fan so although I didn't have any overheating trouble with the 6700 I would much rather have the comfort of the fan inside of the FX 30 also see the FX 30 does not have an EVF so because of that it does have a higher resolution rear display at 2.36 million dots versus the 1.03 on the 6700 also before i wrap up the fx30 i forgot to mention does not have a mechanical shutter where the 6700 does have a mechanical shutter but overall if i had to pick which one was the better camera when it comes to construction handling and all that stuff honestly the fx30 is just a much more robust camera it's a pro tool where the 6700 is not so much a pro tool all right let's talk about sensor and process 
processor because this is where these cameras are actually very, very similar. They both use the Exmor R 26 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. They both give you 26 megapixel stills. They both give you 4K oversample from 6K. They both give you 14 bit color when it comes to still images. They both give you 14 plus stops of dynamic range when you use S-Log3. They both have Bion's XR processors in them, but the 6700 does have the AI co-processor out of the Sony ZV-E1 and the Sony A7R5. Now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and talk about photos because the 6700 is meant to be a hybrid camera for photography people and video people. The 6700 has some clear advantages for people who are into photography. We already talked about the photo video switch. I'm not saying it's a speed demon, but it can shoot 11 FPS in mechanical or electronic shutter. The FX30 can only do one frame at a time. The mechanical shutter can actually go up to a 4,000th of a second, but if you go to electronic shutter, it could do one 8,000th of a second, which matches what the FX30 could do. Also, the 6700 could do JPEGs in different sizes at different qualities. It could do heat photos at different sizes and different quality. It could do HLG still images, and it can do compressed or lossless raw photos. It can't do uncompressed, whereas the FX30 can only do compressed when it comes to raw, and it doesn't give you any options to customize. Now, the FX30 can do JPEGs and heat photos and HLG still image. Lastly, the 6700 can do in-camera focus bracketed up to 299 images. Obviously, the FX30 is not a photography camera, so although it can take bomb photos, it can't do that. So the 6700 clearly has the advantage when it comes to photos. Now, I'm gonna bring the FX30 back over here because they both deserve to be on the table, right? I feel like the 6700 kind of kicked off the FX30 when it comes to photo, but they are both very, very competent video cameras, right? They both use the same image chain. They both have the same options. You can do 4K24, 4K30, 4K60, 4K120, 1080p 240 frames per second they both have picture profiles they both have s-log 3 they both have s cinetone you can upload your LUTs to both of them they both shoot in 10 bit 422 and h264 h265 and intra options and compressed options and actually they both support four channel 24 bit 48 kilohertz audio so the difference is and it's a huge difference and this is where although they're both fantastic video cameras the 6700 gets kicked out of here so not only can it do everything Everything that we talked about with the 6700, it could do 16-bit RAW over HDMI. It adds in things like Cine EI. It's got DCI 4K built into it, True 24P, anamorphic support, and don't forget it's got built-in fans, which is a big deal. Now they both have focus map and breathing compensation and all that stuff, and they both actually support live streaming. So the FX30 could do live streaming up to 4K 15, but the 6700 kicks it up a notch, and it can actually do live streaming up to 4K 30. Also, the 6700 does add in built-in time-lapse. The FX30 does not have that. And it's actually a really good feature because it creates the time-lapse in the camera. It gives you a video file and you can do it in whatever picture profile you want, including S-Log3. Now, both of them also have dual-based ISOs and they both give you loads of dynamic range. So I'm gonna give the video part to the FX30, but I'm gonna put the 6700 right behind it because the 6700 will blow your mind when it comes to video quality. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is autofocus. So the FX30 FX30 is no slouch when it comes to autofocus. It's got 759 phase detect autofocus points. It can autofocus down to negative three EV. It can track people, it can track animals and photo and video. And overall, it's a really dependable autofocus system. It works amazing. When you put it up against the 6700, it's kind of no comparison. So it kind of kicks the FX30 off the table because the 6700 shares the same great autofocus system, but it adds in the AI coprocessor. So you still get 759 phase detect points, but because of the AI chip, it could track planes, trains, automobiles, insects, people, all of that stuff. Plus it can also do all of the human pose estimations. So it can track people if they're wearing a helmet, it can figure out where the eye is. If they turn around, it can figure out where their body is and where their head will be in relation. And if they're turning, it can figure, hey, I need to go ahead and turn back to the face while they're turning back towards me. So here's what's crazy. I'm using a 50 millimeter on an APS-C. So I'm at least 17 or 18 feet away from him. And it can still pick his eye out through the visor. So what I'm saying is the 6700 has basically the same autofocus system from the ZV-E1 and the A7R5, and it is really, 
really good. The other big deal when it comes to both of these is clear image zoom. Now with the FX30, because it doesn't have the extra processor, you can do clear image and you can still use active stabilization on top of it, but you do lose any type of tracking as soon as you engage clear image. Well, the 6700, just like the ZV-E1, gives you the full kit and caboodle even if you use clear image. So you can still throw on active stabilization. You can still do full autofocus tracking in all modes if you use clear image. So the autofocus W, although I'm not saying that the FX30 is bad because it's still one of the best out there in autofocus, it can't hold a candle to the A6700 because this is Sony's best AF system. Now let's talk about interface because this is where the 6700 is gonna take the W. It has the new interface like the ZV-E1 has. So a lot of these controls are now on the screen. And honestly, I can't wait until Sony puts this at every Sony camera. I hope we get an update on some of the existing cameras. I'm not too we ain't gonna get it but i'm hopeful right but anyways you can change the iso on the screen you can change the shutter speed and white balance and all that stuff just by touching the buttons on the screen also the 6700 adds in accessibility features you can switch it to focus shutter which is a great addition to sony cameras where you can just touch wherever you want to focus on the screen and bam it'll take the photo it also adds in the tile similar to the fx30 and the fx3 where you get a main one and the main two and everything is available in this tile configuration so even though the FX30 does have Sony's new menu system, I really like the additions that the 6700 has over it from the ZV-E1. Just to touch on overheating again, I've ran the 6700, like I said, for an hour at 75 degree temperature, didn't even get an overheat warning, and I never get it overheating with the FX30 because it's got a built-in fan. I don't think you need to worry, but if you want that peace of mind on which one is gonna give you better overheating performance, it's absolutely the FX30 because it's got a freaking fan in it. Let's talk about AI. A lot of us love the new feature from the ZV-E1 where auto framing will reframe you as you move around the frame. It'll stop the aperture down if more people come into the frame and as soon as they leave the frame it'll zoom back in on you and pick a shallower aperture so it's actually a really clutch feature for content creators the ai chip also improves on things like metering auto white balance auto focus which we talked about already so those things the ai stuff when it comes to auto focus and all that stuff are really really game changing so let's go ahead and bring everything back around full circle to be honest with you you can't go wrong with either one but there is a distinction and this is what you need to ask yourself if you care about photography then obviously the 6700 is the superior option it gives you more when it comes to photography more control it has a mechanical shutter it's got a photo video switch and a lot of times you got to make a compromise with the smaller cameras when it comes to photo or video well the 6700 gives you all of the same sauce that the fx30 gives you when it comes to video but it is lacking some things when it comes to the fx30 the fx30 is a much more robust tool for people who don't really care about taking photos it is a much more robust body it's much more industrialized it's got contact points on it it's got more buttons on it it's got a built-in fan it's got dual card slots it's got a full-size hdmi port that does support raw recording it gives you things like center ei it gives you things like true 24p dci 4k all those things so the major difference is one is really suited towards people who only want to be serious about video where the 6700 is geared for the person who wants an aps-c camera that's great at photography and also great at video and gives them all the accessibility things that all of the new AI stuff could do. That is where the 6700 wins. So I can't say which is better because in my opinion, they serve two totally different purposes. You just gotta figure out which one checks the most boxes for you to be honest with you. That's what it boils down to. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments, what your choice is gonna be. And until next time, I'm out of here. Tight shirt, Terry Warfield. Piece of chicken grease, y'all. Much love. Peace.